Coming up on FTC Recap, guest Kyler Smith, founder of Basebot.co, comes on the show to discuss drivetrains and open source design in FTC. Headlines include gaming on Chromebooks, and it's going to be some time until we find out how awards are going to work this year in FTC. All this and more coming up on FTC Recap. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First Updates Now FTC is produced in partnership with the Orange Alliance. Make TOA your place to go for FTC team stats and event results at theorangealliance.org. And also, viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Welcome to FTC Recap, where you get the breakdown and discussion of what's going on in the FTC community. For first updates now, I'm Ishan Oberoi. Joining me is Egan. We'd like to welcome our guest, Kyler Smith, who's the founder of Basebot.co. If you've got any questions for him throughout the show, uh, make sure to chat to tag at first updates now in the chat, and we'll be sure to get to them. In the later half of the show, we'll have a discussion about drivetrains and open source designs in FTC. Lots to cover in this show, so let's jump into our headlines. NVIDIA just released a beta version of the game streaming platform GeForce Now for Chromebooks. GeForce Now is a platform that allows games to run on servers and the users to just stream the output of the server so they don't need a powerful computer to run AAA titles. The service is currently free to play for one hour increments. The experience isn't bug free, but to be able to play some modern titles on a Chromebook is pretty cool. I mean, what do you guys think about this? I use Chromebooks for school, so I don't know if it's real out on that, but it's still kind of cool <laughs> being able to use powerful computing for uh, gaming. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, Kylie. Uh, I was just, I, it seems like it'll probably require a pretty good wi-fi connection but i mean hey if if it works that 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 could be pretty cool for some people so yeah the wi-fi the wi-fi was a big thing when um when stadia launched uh, not too long ago um if anyone remembers that dumpster fire um (laughs) but it was even with the good wi-fi connection stadia was struggling uh but i know people that have tried uh that tried geforce now before um, they had it like an open beta for uh, Apple computers a little bit ago, and um, it was great for them. They just used up all their, you know, Wi-Fi data for the for the month. So, right. Hopefully, hopefully they can sort of compress that down a little more or something. But um, from what I've seen, it's a very, very usable uh, system. That's cool. I mean, you're not going to get perfect uh, gaming, but like I saw some little bit of lag but it was a lot less than what was reported for stadia and other uh streaming platforms so i'm pretty excited for this yeah Yeah. it's pretty exciting so we've already seen a lot of great cad challenges this off season starting with the containment design challenge um and the second valor cad challenge happy to see that continuing on Uh, in case you still have that design itch the caravan cad challenge is there for you the game will be released this Friday, August 21st, uh, so be sure to sign up before then. Uh, they've got a Discord that you can visit. Um, I believe Tyler has the link for that. And you go check it out. You've got two days, less than two days, to, to register and get on there. Um, and it's another one of those CAD challenges to, to get you warmed up for the season that is uh sometimes scarily close <laughs> can i just say this this cad challenge has the coolest looking logo with all those gears <laughs> and everything uh but also if you haven't done a cad challenge I mean, it's great practice especially for this season in working with collaborating with your teams since we're all likely going to be working virtually and the less we can meet up the safer we may be so uh by having those cad challenges it's definitely good practice yeah honestly those cad challenges are, are... I've seen some really impressive stuff come out of those. Like, uh, also just if you have no experience at all, just doing a CAD challenge can really like get you started and get you that little bit of push that you need to actually, 
start learning CAD, you know? Um, I, I've found that, like, when I try to teach people CAD, I've been doing a CAD class this summer uh, weekly, and the hardest part is getting people to actually practice the skills and keep, you know, actually build, design something. And with, you know, a CAD challenge, that really gives you a deadline and a reason to do that. So, yeah, awesome. So, in, in other news, uh, Fortnite was recently banned from both the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store for not following the terms of policy. Uh, they were not following the terms of service by charging people without using the Apple and Google APIs, which give Apple and Google uh, a 30% cut on all in-app trans uh, transactions. They are now suing Apple for antitrust and having a monopoly, and they have released a video mocking the fi famous 1984 commercial from Apple. Uh, you can still download the app on Android phones by downloading the APK from online, but there's no way you can do that on an iOS device. Uh, I found this video pretty funny. They were definitely taking shim shots at Apple, and this is all coming in light. Uh, there were recently a bunch of congressional hearings about antitrust, uh, so I thought that this was a pretty cool topic. Yeah, I... Um... I don't know if any of you guys watch Linus Tech Tips. There's a pretty good chance that some of you do. Uh, they have, there's a sort of group that they're loosely connected to called Floatplane. Um, that's kind of like a subscription YouTube alternative for certain creators, including Linus Tech Tips. Um, and they were on a, a live stream a little bit ago talking about how their their app for for iOS was getting like blocked left and right because they couldn't, have any sort of links outside of the app to where you could um, where you could buy anything or where you might be suggested to buy anything. So you couldn't see other channels that were on there. Um, you couldn't like search for anything. And another weird thing was there was no like user generated content. So zero comments at all. Um, but now Fortnite's joined the battle. So <laughs> they've got some some big pockets deep pockets uh, on their side this time <laughs> i just want to chime in old man tyler here if now i wasn't born or i wasn't really alive when this came out in 1984 but this recreation is pretty amazing and some of the digs in the Fortnite uh commercial that they did where they replaced like the the dude on screen with like an apple that has a bite out of it <laughs> and stuff like that it's pretty amazing um so the and when this commercial came out this was this was pretty revolutionary um, you know, for an announcement to do something like it this way. And obviously 1984, you know, a big dystopian thing if you've, you know, read the book or anything like that. Uh, so I kind of, you know, got, I'm not a big Fortnite fan, but was pretty giddy when I saw the commercial for it. <laughs> cool stuff. All right, move on to the next topic, Egan. Yeah. So wizards.exe uh, is hosting ConnectCon, which I just learned about this today. This is so... This is, I'm, I'm genuinely excited for this. It's really cool. It's an online convention slash seminar um, with industry professionals in the STEM fields. Uh, they've got engineers from Google and Uber and a physicist from Johns Hopkins uh, University on there. So they've got a pretty sick um, lineup of people, of uh, presenters. Um, they've got two sessions a day, one at 10 a.m. Eastern two, and 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, some of the ones they've got on here, uh, what's it like to work at iRobot, adventures in biomedical science, um, weather forecasting, will we ever get it right? There's a lot of cool stuff in there. Um, so certainly something to check out. That's going to be on August 24th through the 28th. Yeah, personally. That looks pretty awesome. <laughs> I'm That's... a little bit behind the scenes on that one. Uh, it's going to be all of next week. Um, and it'll be streamed live on YouTube. So that's definitely something to check out, uh, especially with all this virtual stuff. Company tours were such a big part of FTC. So we're trying to bring that out to uh, a lot of teams out there. Uh, Rev Robotics just recently announced that they will be providing $25,000 of team sponsorships this season. The application can be found on the Rev Robotics website and will close on the day of kickoff. In addition, they are providing a discount code to all teams to give them a discount on certain parts, mainly electronics and some motors and stuff like that. It has not been announced how many teams will receive a sponsorship and what the sponsorship amount will be per team. 
Um, last year, they did a similar thing with a, a sponsorship. I think they gave slightly less money and they tried to give it to one team in a region, uh, one team per region. So there was like one team from Maryland, one team from every single region around FTC. I mean, yeah, this this was uh, um, I, I was happy to see some more stuff coming out of Rev, uh, you know, what they've been. The, the product release from last year and all of the um the just all just all the new stuff coming out it, it's really nice to see more um you know more interaction i guess into the ftc community and i i believe um i've seen that the uh the 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 grant money is going to over 50 teams so uh one more than one per state potentially um, you know, like someone said in chat, the new documentation is pretty epic. Uh, so I'm, I'm just really happy that, that they're, uh, they've got this out to, to more teams now. Um, I know, I know my team's applying for it. So, you know, you guys and could too. I saw the, the teams that I mentor were talking about on, on Slack, uh, applying for that. So, yeah. And even though it's $25,000 split into 50 plus teams will be around $500. That $500 will go a long way with the discounts that they provide to teams on top of that. So definitely something to look forward to. For sure. All right. Um, in a recent email to First, it was asked when we would be getting more details on the revamped engineering documentation, uh, which replaces the engineering notebook. Um, so... We now know that that will not, uh, we will not be getting any more information on that until after kickoff. So, um, this is a little disappointing for me because, uh, you know, a, a start on the notebook, whatever it may be, is, is certainly beneficial, you know, creating a format for yourself. Um, and all of the, all of the preparation that you can do around a notebook, like between seasons. Um, and just going from this big shift from what we've done for I don't know how long uh, to something that could be completely different. We don't know. It's it's a little um, it's a little scary to see how yeah. much how much of what we what we have like would transfer. Yeah, def definitely. The um, I, I'm, I'm really curious about these changes for the notebook uh, because, well, I I graduated a couple of years ago, so I, I always did the notebook. Obviously, everybody's always done the notebook how it normally is. But what they were saying about the engineering documentation is that it was like 15, 16 pages. And like, you know, you, you for a normal notebook, you've got like a very thick stack of, you know, it all that information, trying to fit that under, you know, 15 or 16 pages, I think is... It, it very tricky, but in some ways it's a very interesting design challenge, right? Because at that point, you know, you've got a yeah. every single inch of the page is like really important. Um, I don't know. It'll be, it'll definitely be weird. Yeah, and like a thing with the notebook was, like, everybody would start it over the summer because if you didn't start it over the summer, you were gonna get swamped with robot work. Uh, so it'll yeah. be interesting to see how they make it shorter. And how they will still get proof that you did you get you did what you say you do did during the presentation. Um, so I'm definitely right. interested in looking into both those things. Uh, and now that, we're gonna yeah go ahead. Oh, sorry, I was gonna say that combined with you know a lot more of the events being uh, like you're not gonna be able to have judges come to the pit to ask questions. So <laughs> like beyond the presentation, so you're gonna have you know, just this teeny little bit of, you know, communication but with the judges is, uh, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. All right. That's going to wrap up our headlines. Now we're going to discuss drivetrains and open source designs in FTC. In this segment, let's discuss that. Yeah. And that featured that our new intro. Um, if you have any more ideas for intros, we'd definitely be opening. We really like that one. It was, was very cute. popular on Reddit. Um, but <laughs> for those of you who may have better ones, uh, send us a message on the fun discord. 
for those of you just tuning in, our guest is Kyler Smith, the founder of Basebot.co. To start us off, Kyler, could you tell us what Basebot is and why you started it? Yeah, so essentially Basebot is an open source drivetrain design that I put together that's based around laser cut plates. So the reasoning behind it was a couple of years ago when I was on the team, I uh, actually, we, uh, I was, my, I was on uh, Team 10355 Project Peacock, and our sister team actually made it to Worlds. Uh, and then, so the next year, I came back uh, after having traveled to Worlds with them, and I had seen a lot of these plate-based drivetrain designs, and I wanted to kind of emulate that uh, for myself, uh, for our team. Uh, but the problem was nobody, none of our mentors knew anything about designing drivetrains um, really. Uh, so I was kind of there figuring it out by myself. Um, and I spent a very, very long time trying to work out how to place the motors and the wheels. And I, you know, I did some stuff with 3D printing and bevel gears. And, um, and basically it took the whole season just figuring out the drivetrain itself. And by the end of the season, uh, all of our uh, manipulators, uh, this was relic recovery. Um, so, you know, our glyph mechanisms and whatnot uh, were at subpar. I mean, they worked. We did okay at competition. But if we had been able to spend the whole season focused on designing those mechanisms rather than focusing on uh, something as simple as a drivetrain, uh, I basically felt like I wish I had had a resource to show me uh, this is how you do it, uh, or you know, this is a very good way to do it. And then from there, you can actually take it and modify it to do what you need. Um, so that's really what I had in mind when I started designing Basebot. Um, my intention then was for uh, you to take those designs, take the plates, uh, and modify them in whatever ways you need. Um, but you can kind of keep the basic uh, uh, locations of motors and things. Um, and obviously, at this point, there's great resources out there like Game Manual Zero and uh, FTC Discord. At the time, I, I don't think Game Manual Zero existed. And the FTC Discord, I, I didn't know about it. Um, <laughs> So, and, you know, these are, these are still issues, like, you know, you want to get people uh, into the community and get people, you know, talking about stuff. But at, you know, for me at the time, I was just like, I think this would be the resource that this is a resource that should be out there. So that's why I designed Basebot. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, right. Do you guys have any questions or anything? I, I can keep talking if you want <laughs> yeah no that's all right uh, we won't we won't make you do that the whole show yeah well ah, it every good. once in a while <laughs> um i was just looking through the website and i i think it's very funny that you have a uh, a swerved a swerved design yes. <laughs> for the uh the the base bot origin um, yeah so i could on origin so that was that was my first attempt and <laughs> my my thought process was i want to you know i want Part of that was just I wanted to design a swerve drive. So I was like, I'm going to work this into this project. I didn't really think about it. Um, I, and obviously, immediately when I when I put it out there and told like the FTC Discord that uh, I, you know, this is Basebot, uh, they I, I was they obviously made fun of the fact that I <laughs> included a swerve drive uh, and we we actually built this swerve drive and it does not work so do not build it <laughs> i highly recommend not building the swerve drive and, and there it says if you look at the website on the screen there it says please read disclaimer and there is a disclaimer saying not to build it um but i figured uh the so if you look at there's the origin design and the phoenix design and the origin design is basically what i put out in the into the world with no outside input from other teams or anything. And then immediately after uh, 
after releasing it, I collected all of the information that people were giving me in terms of, you know, why it was bad. And <laughs> uh, basically, I took all of that and I designed within just a couple of weeks, actually, I designed Basebot Phoenix, uh, which I have not seen those same complaints uh, arising for uh, from and that so one. So what drivetrains do you have on Basebot Phoenix? Uh, so Basebot Phoenix, there's a few different options. Uh, and uh, the main ones that I would recommend using are the eight-wheel drive and the Mechanum. But there's also a uh, a six-inch Mechanum if you really want to be uh, extra. And there's also a tread drive just kind of to show um, that you can, you can do some other things with it. Really, the intention of the Basebot design process that I was kind of thinking of with when designing it is that you would you would buy the parts that you need, uh, cut out these plates uh, before kickoff, and then on kickoff day you can decide between uh, any of these options and say, okay, we need we definitely need uh, Mechanum or we definitely need eight wheel drive, and then and honestly those are the only two that are really uh, that useful, uh, in my opinion, but, um, but you, you can say, you know, this is the one that we need, let's build it right now. And then you can take those parts that you already have. And it's basically, the, there's a lot of overlap between the parts, uh, at least for, uh, the Phoenix design. So, so why go with an eight wheel drive, uh, over like a six wheel drive? I see you also have like a standard center drive, which is your six wheel. Uh, why'd you pick the eight wheel? Um, you could do either. I figured if, if you, I mean, there's not that big of a difference between an eight wheel and a six wheel drive. Um, you, you can actually, uh, there are ways to set this up to where you can do a all powered six wheel drive as well. Um, I just wanted to give the option for an eight wheel drive. And honestly, so most of these configurations, um, you, you can you can just go to the website, buy all the parts, and make the thing as it's as I put it together if you want. Uh, but that's not really what I recommend doing. Um, I recommend going into the CAD and messing with it and trying to figure out what works best for your team. Um, and you know some of that isn't super clear on the website, but uh, the intention is really just to give you a starting place to work from. Um, and actually, yeah. if you look at, at the page right there that says, uh, uh, you can't see that. There you go. Uh, the one that says 10355 Origin Experiments, if you click on that, you can see um, what I handed Basebot Origin off to uh, my brother and his robotics team. And this is what they came up with based off of it. Um, and that's kind of the intention of Basebot more than uh, just you know buying all the parts and building it. Uh, yeah, so in that in that same vein, I saw on on the very homepage of the website, um, you've got your uh, 10355, an example of a Skystone robot, um, with what looks like the same sort of wheel configuration um, design on the sides as the uh, Phoenix plates. So right. did so you guys took the um, took the 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 sort of wheel placement. Uh, and motor placement of the Phoenix plates and, and work that into your uh, your yeah, so, Skystone robot? Yeah, so that was all my brother. He's the uh, the lead kind of designer on their team. And it, this was his first year actually doing CAD for robotics. Um, and so he took the um, motor placement and the wheel placement and... He just kept it, and he built up the whole robot around it, and that was their uh, competition robot for the season. Um, and but you know, after doing that, he's gotten more and more into CAD, uh, and that's you know what's made him. Uh, you know, this year, uh, they have said they're probably not going to use Basebot uh, just because they feel confident enough at this point that they can design their own uh, drivetrain. Uh, however. I think the base bot was a kind of an important stepping stone in getting the team to that position uh, where they could actually, uh, where they felt confident with their cat abilities. And actually, 
since then, uh, you were talking about the containment design challenge earlier. Uh, my brother uh, got fifth place in that, and you know, uh, he's a sophomore in high school. So, or, yeah. Cool. And so, do you test out your designs? Have you built them all and made sure they work, or uh, are a lot of these just theoretical? Uh, yeah. So all of the uh, all of them start out as theoretical. I, I've I've actually built. Uh, I haven't built the like the tank tread drive or the. Uh, and honestly, I don't. It, it's that's that's just mainly to get you thinking about. Uh, how it works but i mean i have seen robots like that that work um there's nothing that should be structurally wrong about it or anything it should uh it should be exactly the same as the other um configurations it's just uh you know uh so to answer your question yes we have built the base bots no i have not built every configuration of the base bot so (laughs) Awesome. And so I want to take this topic of drivetrains. We've talked a lot about them and talk about how drivetrains have evolved in FTC. And so if you look at probably the beginnings of FTC, you saw a lot of eight wheel drives, six wheel drives, uh, big beefy robots. They weren't very fast. They were using the old Tetrix motors that if you still remember them, I feel bad for you. Uh, And so we've gotten to a point where there's been a lot of convergence to mechanic drives in recent years, especially since the game Velocity Vortex and the release of the Never S20 orbital motor, which a lot of teams have been putting in their uh, robots. And since then, everybody has been gearing about uh, 1 to 20 mechanic drive, especially at the top levels. There are a few exceptions like Data Force and Redneck Robotics that are known for their famous six-wheel drives. But do you think we're going to see a change in the meta of drivetrains, which is... Pretty much a mechanic. Um, I think the only reason we would see a drastic change in the meta would be if a game had significant terrain. Uh, like Rescue Year, you could. I would not probably recommend Mechanum, <laughs> but that's the uh, that's the last game that I can think of that had these kind of you know terrain challenges. Um, and this year with uh, you know, you know, uh, remote competitions and stuff. I don't necessarily see them including large terrain elements. Uh, I could, I could be wrong about that, but, um, but yeah. So I, I I'm pretty sure Mechanum is gonna stay pretty strong uh, for a while. Egan, uh, what about you? Yeah, I, I hope we get some variety. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I'm. I'm a little tired of seeing uh, Mechanum <laughs> to say yeah, it differently. It, um, it, <laughs> I'm it a little tired of seeing it, you know. It definitely would make it more interesting if there was, like, a reason to do a different kind of drivetrain. But like I was kind of saying earlier, uh, like, I th- think that in most games, the drivetrain should be something that you don't really sp- have to spend that much time as a team thinking about. It should be something that it's a given, uh, unless it's a, you know, part of the challenge, and then uh, from there you can, uh, you know, you can really innovate on your other me- uh, mechanisms to get them, uh, you know, actually working well. So um, this robot yeah. here that Tyler's about to pull up, this is probably one of my favorite robots that doesn't use a mechanism, and it uses a rocker bogey suspension to get over the terrain in uh, Rover Ruckus, and it was probably one of the only robots that was able to do that that effectively. Um, mm, so yes, yeah. <laughs> speaking to Egan, I would love to see variety, um, but as long as First keeps on giving us open playing fields where we don't need to cross the terrain, I don't think we're going to see uh, move over from mechanum, or we might see a shift to six inch mechanum because. Um, those can climb over better. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I saw that robot uh, at Worlds and that it was very it was beautiful to watch it just glide back and forth over that uh, over that crater. It crosses it like it's nothing. So yeah. like, <laughs> I yeah. I mean that that's a cool robot to build if you're just trying to have fun with drivetrains. Um, Absolutely. Egan, you want to move on to the next questions? Uh, I've got one on the the subject of of um fields i think (laughs) 
to 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 continue down that rabbit hole, um, my the the robotics organization I was uh, a part of had an FRC team that was um, accosted for using uh, Mechanum during Steamworks in FRC, um, <laughs> because why use Mechanum in FRC? No one does that. Yeah, we cost all um, teams that use Mechanum in FRC. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. Um, it it'd be interesting to to wonder if if that's gonna become our reality in FTC, um, or uh, even more onto that. If um, if we're going to to see uh, a meta arise like what FRC has, that's so dominant on six wheel drive, um, in in the future with potentially if if we can you know, get past this year, uh, some more collision <laughs> or defense as, as we like to say. Um, so I wonder, I wonder if we'll, we'll ever see any like major shift like that or, or, uh, if we've reached the point where we're at, uh, FRC levels of accosting for the wrong drivetrain. <laughs> Uh, no, it's definitely possible. I, I always love to see interesting drivetrains, uh, you know, and also just any anything interesting on a robot that, like, you can tell a team went out of their way to do something unique and interesting um, that, you know, goes around the meta, uh, <laughs> you know, like, basically designing uh, for the sake of designing. You can tell they had yeah. fun <laughs> with their robot. That's, that's, what I, that's, that's what I like to see uh, yeah. in general. But, there are those uh, awards for a reason. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but uh, in terms of like defense, uh, our, our robot that we built for Relic Recovery, uh, it had the uh, it had mechanic wheels, but the robot weighed so much that we could push pretty much any other robot around on the field. Uh, so you'd have to combine that with a weight limit in order to, which I saw they were getting rid of this year. Uh, for FTC, um, so <laughs> you Basebot is specifically for open source designs, right? And many of the open source designs come from suppliers, right? Like Rev Robotics released their six wheel drive kit. Uh, Go Builder has their Schrafer kit. Do you think there's room for more open source design creators like Basebot that are not made by the suppliers? Uh, could we see more open source things for not just drivetrains, but maybe like linear slides or stuff like that? I mean, yeah, I'd love to see it. Uh, the problem would be uh, where, you know, first has the rules about uh, not, uh, basically the rules are intended to not create, like you don't, you don't want to have a whole mechanism you don't have like an open source arm design or like an open source uh, intake that pops open that you could just get a kit and put it on your robot. Uh, that kind of defeats some of the purpose of uh, you know robotics, in my <laughs> opinion. <laughs> yeah, you don't you don't want to end up like you the know, whole by... lead screw fiasco of Roborecus. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna bolt that on, and I got a free hang. Um, and from the chat, we had Texas Diaz asking, once COVID is contained and vaccinated, I'd love to see an FTC game where defense is accepted and celebrated. That'll drive a different drivetrain narrative. And I mean, I think most of us here on Fun really agree with that. Um, even now, yeah, like with the Mechanum drive, I try to play defense, but it's looked down upon in the FTC community, unlike in the FRC community, where it's like, everybody's doing it um in the ftc community i know of times where judges can look down on a team or wrestle unfairly penalize a team just because they play with a defensive strategy that so falls within the rules and so uh i don't know if you guys have anything to say about defense i personally love it i think it's the only way to create a great equalizer right you can have a robot that's able to score so much more than you. Uh, like you see gluten free every year. Yeah, they're always going to be able to score more than you. But in the end, this is a driving game, right? You got to be able to outdrive everybody as well as build an awesome robot. So yeah. uh, I personally would love to see more defense. Yeah, for yeah. sure. On um, on that same note, in in the opposite direction, maybe um, was I forget which which team exactly, but it was one of the uh, one of the brainstem teams. That had that 
that had a drivetrain, and instead of maxing it out to the 18-inch cube, um, they minimized to almost to to like a a, a significantly smaller size um, to maneuver around people during during Skystone. Um, yeah, I played them once. It was a fun match to play, but I was playing with a yellow card because I played defense in the previous match. <laughs> so yeah, um, but I, I I yeah, I feel like on defense uh, there is a way where it could be taken too far there's like some of the uh some of the vex challenges that i've seen what they'll they'll be like you you can build this like big structure and then a team can just come around come along with like a little flipper and just destroy you know like the whole what you've been working on for the whole match so you don't want it to be where defense is like right. infuriating you want it to be like a, yeah you know one of the um, things i saw in my youtube recommended one time was a uh, a vex um, the last game I think was Tower Takeover or something. Uh, it was a Vex wall bot where the robot would drive itself apart and just like block out an entire corner of the field. Um, <laughs> and you know, I'm I'm kind of glad that that's that's not <laughs> that's not us. Yeah, he's got it up. I mean, yeah, yeah there's definitely <laughs> rules like blocking and stuff like that that are meant that are good rules. Um, but having strategic defensive driving where you are trying to make them t make your opponents take paths that they don't necessarily want to, uh, I think is smart. And not having these stupid scissor lifts to yes. block off an entire corner. Um, all right, so that's going to wrap it up for this section. What is the future of Basebot? Is it gonna? Are you still going to be releasing designs? What's your plans for the future on that? Um, so my plan was to like after a little while eat. I released some new Basebot designs, but uh, th like after I released the first ones, I was like, oh, I'm going to have to do so many iterations uh, on this in order for them to be like good. And then I released uh, Phoenix and people were like, ah, yeah, that's pretty decent. Um, so honestly, at this point, what I'd like to see is um, if there's any teams out there who end up using Basebot, I'd like to you know, feature the robots on the website and do kind of like a gallery thing. Uh, and I don't, I'm not going to do as much like designing and stuff at this point. Uh, I do also want to do some tutorial videos and whatnot to help teams get started with Basebot, um, but, or with just designing in general. But that's, that's basically it um, for, for the future of Basebot. So. Sounds good. Uh, now we're going to switch over to some fun trivia. We've already selected somebody that will be playing against you, Kyler. Uh, you'll be playing against Kyler for a chance to win $80. We have five trivia questions, uh, all related to technology or FTC. Whoever gets the most right wins. If there's a tie, we're going to use time as a tiebreaker. So don't be typing in the background like somebody was trying to do last show. Um, time is Allegedly. a tiebreaker. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> All right, with that said, All we do right. have uh, Steven on, uh, who claims oh he's from Ultraviolet, <laughs> actually. So, uh, so Steven, how's it going, man? You ready to play some trivia against Kyler today? Oh, hopefully I'm there. Steven, are you there? Maybe. Sorry, sorry. That's all right. Uh, yeah. he, he, Steven's Canadian, clearly, so uh, uh, all that sorry going on in the background. <laughs> all right, so Steven, did you hear the rules? You know how to play. All right, $80 on the line. We're going to ask that Kyler takes off his headphones so he can't hear any of the questions. We'll give Kyler a big wave once we're ready to have him come back then. All right, so All Kyler's right. going to do that. And with that said, your time begins in three, two, one. How much does it cost in U.S. dollars to register for FTC in North America? $250. Who was Bluetooth named after? Could you repeat that? Who was Bluetooth named after? Pass. What is QR, or as in QR code, short for? Pass. These are tough ones. Uh, which FRC game was used at one-third scale as a pilot for the first VEX challenge? And we'll take name or year. One well. Name one of the three types of, of ciphers from Relic Recovery. 
Who was Bluetooth named after? What is QR as in QR code short for? And which FRC game was used at one third scale as a pilot for first Vex challenge? All right, in time. Satisfied with my two answers. All right, fair enough. That's all right. We'll bring Kyler back on, on the screen. Give him a big wave, everybody. And we get Kyler with his headphones back on here. All right, so Kyler Stevens says he's confident with the answers he was able to provide. We won't tell you how many that was. Uh, but with that said, uh, your time. Are you? Do you know all the rules? First off, you know you can pass, and we can come back, right? Okay. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. So you can pass once. And then we'll come back, but if you pass again or say, I don't know, that's the answer we'll take. And your time begins in three, two, one. How much does it cost to register in U.S. dollars for FTC in North America? $306. Who was Bluetooth named after? Hiram Bluetooth. What is QR as in QR code short for? Pass. Which FRC game was used at one third scale as a pilot for the first Vex challenge? Need a year or name? 2004. Name one of the three types of ciphers from Relic Recovery. A uh, snake. And what is QR as in QR code short for? Quantum reading. I don't know. All right, time. All right, we're going to bring Steven back in here and go through these one at a time. We'll see if either Steven's going to win $80 or if we're going to move on to $90 for our next show. With that said, let's go through these. Starting out, how much does it cost to register for FTC in North America? We'll take the closest to this. Uh, Steven said 250 Kyler said 306 It's 275 Steven gets a point. One nothing. Who was Bluetooth named after? This is man. Who the heck knows this? By the way, whoever came up with this question. So, I, <laughs> is that you, Egan? So. Uh, I I enlisted the help of some friends. All right, um, to come up with some of these. Fair enough. All right. Well, uh, Steven said pass. Came back said pass again. And uh, Kyler said Hyrene Bluetooth. You're actually close, but it's not. It's Harold Bluetooth. <laughs> Who's the ah. king of Denmark and Norway? One nothing for. Steven. I've actually heard that story. It's really interesting. But well, you yeah. tell us afterwards. Check. All right. So go. Yeah, go check it. Yeah. Go look it up. All right. <laughs> um, what is uh, QR as in QR sh code short for? Steven said pass, and he came back and said pass again. Uh, Kyler said quantum reading. It's actually quick response. One nothing. Mm. For Steven, $80 on the line. Which FRC game was used at one third scale as a pilot for the first Vex challenge? Steven passed and then did pass again. Kyler said 2004. That is correct. It is 2004, or also known as First Frenzy or Tyler's senior year. Nice job. So, uh, one, one. Coming down to this, and remember, time is our tiebreaker. Name one of the three types of ciphers from Relic Recovery. Steven said snake. Kyler said snake. That means it's tied up two to two. We're going to go to time for $80 on the line. Steven, your time was a minute 24. Kyler's time, 52 seconds. Kyler's going to take it in this one, in our closest one yet. Steven, thanks for playing, man. Appreciate it. Not taking it today, but still a good effort. Yeah, yeah, thanks. All right, thanks, buddy. Take care. All right, so we Kyler... should know the register cost one. He had to pay it for us. <laughs> <laughs> so Kyler gets the uh, wind music playing on in the background. Nicely done. And next trivia will go up to $90 a shot. Yeah, that, that's the first time we've gone into a time tiebreaker. So uh, you guys are making it closer, but we're still keeping it very tough. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Egan, you want to end us off? Yeah. So uh, thank you guys for all the follows and subscriptions that we've received tonight. And don't forget that you can subscribe for free if you or your parents have Amazon Prime uh, through Twitch Gaming, I think it's called now, or Twitch Prime, uh, whatever you know it as. 
Uh, we hope you enjoyed this episode of FTC Live. If you want to stay connected with first updates now FTC is doing, be sure to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at FunFTC. And join our Discord through the link in the chat. We're always looking for feedback to reach out to, so reach out to us on the Fun Discord to let us know what ideas you have for future shows. Thank you again to Kyler for coming on to the show. On behalf of myself, Ishan, and our producer, Tyler, working behind the scenes as always, I would like to thank you all for tuning in. All right, and we'll cut on that. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.